Facebook. I hope I found you doing wonderful on tonight. This is your favorite girl, April Mason, dating coach and feminine lifestyle strategist. And tonight we're going to talk about something that's quite sensitive uh, for me, but I decided I wanted to share it with you because I believe what we're going through in our country right now and uh, looking at the state of people, you all know that I'm not just all about dating and relationships. You know, I'm more about the byproduct of the things that cause the byproduct of why you act the way that you act, okay? Why you do the things that you do. So I said, let me give them a little bit more insight because uh, several of my friends, I get it all the time, they're like, you're very ambiguous. Only tell us on social media, you know, what you want us to see. You know, we don't, how we be wanting to know, honey. You know, you take pictures and they be cute, but we want to know who took the pictures. Like, they be all in my business like that, right? So on social media, I only give you all maybe uh, less than 5% of who April Mason is. And I, find, I see my door is opening in my office. Come on in here. You late. My assistant is late. No, no, you're supposed to be running, you're supposed to be running the other camera. Looking like your kids. <laughs> Coming, looking like I heard you scream in my driveway. I'm like, because you're late. That's my daughter, y'all. She worked for me. And she's supposed to be running the YouTube camera. That's why we're not on YouTube right now. Because you're supposed to be live running the YouTube. No, no, no. I'm just gonna download it and I'm gonna put it over there. You getting docked this week. Talking about I'm salary. Yeah, you salary, but you're getting docked. Hey, I'm a matter of fact. I need my closet and stuff together. Oh, I need you to clean my closet since you're late. <laughs> Whatever. So, anywho, um, as I was saying, you know, this is what happens when your children work for you. You know, they, oh, my, I forgot. You know, she over there chilling. But um, even, I'm going to talk about even the relationship that I have with my daughter now and how all of that came about because we were not on the same page for a while. But as I was saying, I only show you all a very small percentage of my life. I, I live by the motto, uh, uh, private life, I mean, uh, personal life, private, lifestyle, public. So I don't feel the need to always um, show you, you know, who I'm dating, who my man is, um, where I'm at all the time, or what I'm doing. I don't feel the need to, to, to do that because I believe that my personal life is not necessarily what is is the information that i want to share because that's not the information that's helping you get to that next level if that makes sense but this part of my personal life i did want to share with you because i believe it will help so many of you um, in this stage of your life uh, for those of you that don't know i will be i'm getting ready to be 45 45 and about a little, a little, a little over thirty days, about forty-five days. I'll be forty-five, and um, I went through a very interesting time um, with my fluctuating with my weight loss. All my life, I've pretty much been a size six eight. Got married, blew up like a little, uh, you know, blowfish because I was dealing with depression, and and I shouldn't have got married in my twenties anyway. That that was not we wasn't in the right mind frame, nor did he and I have the right information to be getting married anyway. The things that I teach you, I did not have. I had to learn those things. Okay, so um, I went through that, and then you know I always was a smaller woman, but then something shifted. So for those of you that do not know, because every time I meet y'all out in public, y'all trip out. Yes, I am a shorty. I am 5'3", five, 5'4", five, ish. Let's just say Kevin Hart and I are the same height. All right. I know my pictures. I look a lot. I look taller. Um, in my mind, I'm like 5'7", five, 5'8". Five, my entire family is tall. My son is 6'3". The other one is like 5'11". My daughter is about 5'. Six or seven, or so, eight, somewhere in there. My mom is tall. My dad is tall. My grandparents are tall. So I'm the little, as they say, the littlest one um, in the family. And the reason why I'm saying that is because for my body size, the weight that I was gaining did not work. And when you have longer legs and a shorter torso, 
immediately everything go right here to the midsection, okay? And you mean, I'm still working on getting the rest of this back fat gone, okay? So for me, being a, a fuller figure woman at 5'3 was not for me. Now, others may say, you know, hey, love yourself how you are and all those things. And, I, and I'm going to get into some of these cliches that have been keeping us unhealthy. And some of the things that I might say tonight might make you feel some sort of way. It's not that I'm not being sensitive. I had to look at it and deal with myself in this manner. I am not a doctor. I am not, I, I'm not giving you any medical advice. I'm just giving you what worked for me. And if you saw my before and after pictures that I've been sharing, and even the lingerie pictures that I've been sharing for our new lingerie line, um, and that was inspired by my weight loss as well as um, I'm into femininity. And I think when a woman put on lingerie, there's just something else that comes out of her when she throws it on. It's just this thing that happens. And, and I like that thing. Okay. So I've been, I've been a, a, a avid lingerie wearer for a very long time. So I decided, let me, let me do a beta test and see how it works. Right. So I just wanted to get that out the way though, that I may say some things that may sound insensitive, but I'm not being insensitive. This, this is how I had to talk to myself. Uh, this is how I had to own up to everything that was happening in my life. I had to take responsibility for every pound that I had put on, okay? So let's take it back to 2000, well, I noticed it in 2000, okay? I won't count that because that was post breakup weight. Post breakup weight, that don't count because I wasn't eating. <laughs> Y'all, I had got all the way down to a size four. I need to actually I need to put some of these clothes on eBay or something. Need all of these size fours around here. So that was post breakup weight. So I'm not counting that because that was y'all know what happened when you go through a breakup. So that was like 2015, I think. I went through a really bad period of, uh, we're friends now, but, um, so I'm going to count that. So let's, let's let that alone. Um, uh, cause you probably seen some really smaller pictures of me, but that was post breakup. That don't count. Cause you know, you wasn't eating, you was, Oh no, I didn't call off my wedding. All of that. Right. So let's go to 2017. Right before I went on tour it, I went on a redesign your life tour. So a lot of things that were, a lot of things were going on during that time. Um, and I was, I still had to keep moving and going uh, and do the tour. So my first tour stop was in March, the top of March. Well, my biological father passed away. Valentine's day, I think, or the day before Valentine's day. And so it was a lot. It was definitely um something for me to deal with for those of you that are new to me hey but i'll give you a little bit about my background i am a woman that i dealt with 12 years of molestation i've dealt with domestic violence i to where you would not recognize the left side of my face i've dealt with um, i've been raped before i've dealt with low self-esteem um caused by um, the things that were said to me growing up as a child, not feeling good enough, you know, all of those type of things. So fast forward to when my father passed away, which was one of the perpetrators, right? I felt some sort of way, but I, I couldn't really take the time to grieve in it. Um, not because of him passing, but there was so much I found out about myself and how, why I was the way that I am. Um, through his obituary. So my oldest brother on my father's side, uh, I'm the only girl, it's four boys and one girl. On my mother's side, I, I'm the oldest of six. So on my father's side, my oldest brother and I, we share this exact same birthday. So he mailed me a bunch of obituaries. He, you know, he knew what happened, but you know, it's, it's kind of sticky when other people don't know that side of an individual. So it's, it, I don't require, I didn't require anybody to take my side. I didn't require anybody to, you know, not 
be a Brian, your father at that time. Now I'm going to get into the story and tell you how I figured out um, things that were really bothering me and what I should have done instead. So get the obituary right before I go on tour. And for those of you that have that were at my tour stops, I did I did um, Houston, L.A., New York, Chicago, Atlanta, and it was two more. I forgot the other two two places that I did. D.C. It was one more. I think maybe Memphis. I'm not sure. Um, but I was I was heavier, and I was looking at those pictures today. I was like, ooh. Girl, he was a you couldn't even suck your stomach in um, <laughs> to, to, to take to suck your stomach in and you couldn't even do that to take the pictures because it wasn't no more sucking in. You you didn't you didn't did all you could do. But during that time, um, and I and I say this, and of those people that that are in the entertainment industry, or if you're a speaker, or um, all of my celebrity friends that are singers and and on stages and and all that, I now understood what they meant by tour time. And being on the road is the loneliest time of your life. And for me, it was. And so I'm on tour. I'm going to all of these cities. I'm dealing with all of these women. They're all pouring out to me and telling me all the things that, you know, I've said that have helped change their lives. But nobody knew that I was totally grieving because I found out so much about who I am and I was feeling some sort of way. Plus, I had just became an empty nester. So anyone that's gone, ever gone through being an empty nester, it's a totally different feel, you know, and the, honestly, my redesign your life tour was more for me than it was for um, you all, because I was trying to figure out how to redesign my life now that my children are grown, you know, and gone. So I was dealing with that, you know, getting in the way. I, I didn't know how to handle that. Uh, I'm going to have to do a live with my son-in-law called uh, Surviving My Mother-in-Law. <laughs> I would see if you come over here, um, you know, and do it because um, it was like this at the beginning, like, uh, uh, and you know they always say us little people always got fire, so I got, I do have a little fire, it's just a taint, just a taint. So I'm gonna see one day if he'll come over here, you know, and do survive, surviving my mother-in-law uh, video, so we could talk about it. We can have our conversation. We 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 cool. We cool. We cool now. You know, he called. He called. Said the other day, "Hey, ma." I was like, but I gotta say, I have to take responsibility for my side because I was adjusting to being an empty nester. You know, I'm the one that my kids come to, and I remember that year when my daughter, he and my daughter, started dating. I think they were getting serious around that time. When I came to the house and she let that joker pick out the family Christmas tree, baby, Instagram, Facebook, I acted a clean nut. <laughs> I acted up and I acted up because what it was overall, it was, I felt like I wasn't needed anymore because everything that my daughter needed before I was boom, boom, bang, bang, pow. Now she got this man that comes in that's doing what he's supposed to do. But I'm like, what? We don't do no all blue Christmas tree. That's not what we do. What is this? Why is roll tide and why do I see Alabama stuff all around through this? We don't do that. We're from California. You know, we, we don't. No. So I did. I will admit. I did not handle things in a way that I probably should have. Uh, and a lot of that had to do with, I didn't know how. This is something totally new. So April Mason normally has things in, under control. That's why so many people come to me because I'm a thinker. But when it came to my feelings and my emotions and how I felt about this man coming in and now we got this Christmas tree and carrying on and and I'm just like, you know, wait a minute. What was what we doing here? Right. So I'm dealing with that. I'm so I'm dealing with the death of my my father, who was also one that uh, physically um, sexually abused me. I'm on tour. 
Uh, my daughter has this new dude, you know, they've known each other since sixth, 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 sixth grade. I'm no longer needed. My youngest son is graduating high school and I just don't know what um, to do with myself. And so my emotions run high. Mind you, on top of that, I had recently just had a hysterectomy. They didn't tell me that my hormones would shift. And so I'm still trying to do my work. I think I, have, I was getting ready to release a new book. Um, I'm on tour. I'm doing all of these things, but I'm still not dealing with my emotions. Okay. If you guys see me look over to the side, it's because I'm looking at, um, you know, the screen, looking at the screen. Um, so I had to eventually, well, I was made to stop. So that was 2000 and was it, it was 16. The tour was 17. So this all started in 2016. So it started in 2016. The tour was 2017. Became an empty nester. And then for the first time in my life, um, I lived by myself. Um, um, got a you know a little townhouse. And at 42, 41, 42 was the first time I ever had ever lived alone because I had my children, my first child at 18. So um, I always live with the kids. So this is my first time trying to be grown. I'm out here in these streets um, doing my thing, whatnot. I'm out here dating and having a good time, all that stuff, right? And then, now, uh, I don't know if Joe or Jack is on here, but I, my male friends are very, very wise men. So Around that time, I had met somebody, and, and I run things by my male friends because, you know, I'm like, okay, let me, what this mean? You know, what, what? And so Jack and Joe were like, oh, hey, he, he's a, uh, he doing everything he's supposed to do. We out, you know, we're, we're traveling, we're doing all of these things. Um, and I was like, all right, Joe, what, what you think? What you think? And Joe was like, yeah. Okay, so he's taking you here. He's introducing you to this one. He's doing this. He's doing that. All of the things, right? And, you know, I'm like, yeah, we went to the Ferris wheel and we did this and all this stuff, right? Until I found out that he was married. Told me he had been divorced four years, single for two. Um, and before y'all start asking me, April, did you go to the house? All that joke. And the yeah, answer is yes to everything. He just chose to be very deceitful. And so my male friends, like Jack and Joe, and Jack, Joe, Mike, uh, Tracy knew about it. Um, I think I did I tell Kenny? I might have told Kenny about it. Um, but all my close, close male friends was ready to hunt that ass down because I'm running things by them. And asking them what do they think, and you know, oh, and then I, I remember calling Joe. I said, Joe, um, you know, his job is relocating him because he was an executive at Delta here in Atlanta, and his job is moving him to LA. And he asked me, would I be interested in, you know, coming? You, you know, would I be? And we had this long, long conversation uh, about, you know, possibly making things a little bit more serious. I wasn't in love with him or anything. We were just dating. And I date to collect data. Until I feel like we in there, I don't give my emotions away, but I do know how to enjoy the moment. So I found out that he was married. And uh, like I said, my male friends was very ready to fly in and put that foot in that ass. I promise you, it was like, how? But we figured out, if it all came out, this was his regular thing. So. He wasn't the type to hide you. He wasn't the type to not take you around his friends and family. So the whole family knew, everybody, you know, so it wasn't a, I don't get to introduce you. I don't get to take you to the house. It wasn't anything like that. It was, imagine you meeting someone and you guys are dating and you out and about going to festivals and every concerts and everything like you are. Um, he's single. So 
Uh, even matter of fact, where I met him at is another friend of mine's restaurant. And my friend was like, April, if I ever see that joker come back in here, I'm going to put my foot so far because I met at a friend. We met actually at a friend's restaurant. Okay. So I dealt with that. And, I, and it wasn't that, like I said, it wasn't that I was in love or anything like that. It was, this, this is, this is how I am. It, I'm not so, I'm not sensitive to basic things like somebody talked about me or not. That don't move me. What made me angry with this particular situation was that he didn't care about my brand. So you had me all out in these streets, in these Atlanta streets, riding around in your car. Matter of fact, there's a couple of videos on my page from back then that I went live in in his car. He has very distinct um, interior. So he let me go live in the car. So there was nothing, you know, for me to feel like I was being hidden because I could do what I Honey, you, where are you going? I'm going to play golf. Well, when you go finish playing golf, I'm going to go to dinner. All right, I'm going to stop by. I'm going to come get you. You know, it was like those type of um, things, you know, like you do when you dating. So I found out um, that he was married that same weekend. And, and it's just, I, it hit me the other day. It was Mother's Day weekend, right? Because that same weekend, my daughter... And I had had a huge falling out. So this, I find out this man is married that Mother's Day and my daughter and I, we went like this and we did not talk. We were not talking. I didn't see my grandkids. Um, and y'all know how I'm about them babies. Them, them, my, them my sweethearts. Y'all know how I'm about them babies, right? So um, I was upset. I was angry. And I was just, very disappointed, not because I, not because I was like totally just all engulfed with this man, but it was more from you took my choice away because I asked you and I have the text messages to show that yeah, I've been divorced, you know, I was, I was, I've been divorced four years now, you know, but I've been single two years. My last relationship ended two years ago. And for somebody to not only tell you that, but their actions actually match that, right? So I was upset taken away. And I'm going somewhere with this. I'm going, I'm letting y'all in a little bit on Miss Miss April, right? Um uh and the truth came, I'll tell y'all how the truth came out. The truth came out because one day we had went, we went somewhere. And he said, well, I'm going to just get dressed at your house and I'm going to just head to work because I live like literally camp. For those of you know, Camp Creek area, I live five minutes away from the airport. So he said, well, you know, we went to go get breakfast and all of that stuff. And he got dressed at my house. Well, he left a shirt at my house. That shirt that he switched out of. And I picked up the shirt. But this was I, I, this was like weeks later, weeks later. And there was a woman's name inside of the shirt from the cleaners. And I looked her up on social media and I was like, but by this time he had totally disappeared. I was on set filming a new show and he had disappeared. He came in town um, and we were getting ready to go to Hilton Head for some golf tournament. Um, thing. And he went to, I think, Cancun or somewhere. And he was FaceTiming me the whole time. You know, him and his boys, you know, they are out uh, doing Cancun trip, his golf trip, because he's an avid golfer. And after that, uh, he gets in town. My daughter's graduating college. Now, mind you, my daughter and I, we had already bumped heads because it was a huge um, blow up between myself, her, and um, um, her her husband. So, you know, we just, we, we was Disney. Uh, so I should graduated from Georgia State that day. He had flew back in. He was calling me from the airport. Hey, babe, where you at? I said, I'm at my daughter's graduation, but uh, I'll be home at this time. Meet me at the house. Meet me at the house. We laughed. We joked. Uh, all of that. Uh, good stuff. Uh, had something to eat. Watched a movie. And he made a move that he normally had not done before. And he says, well, I'm getting ready to go. I'm like, where are you going? He said, well, you know, I just got back in town and I got to go get whatever excuse it was. It wasn't good enough for me. 
and it was Mother's Day weekend. So I get that was that was that Saturday. Didn't hear from him on Sunday. Monday I had to be on set. Um, I was filming a new show, um, and I heard from him on Tuesday. He sends me this text messages and says, um, and he said, "Hey, Miss Mason." I know I've been quiet, but you and I, we need to talk. And I said, whatever your truth is, just let me know. I said, I'm not mad or upset. I just want to know what your truth is. Never heard from him again. So this is when a couple of days later, about a week later is when I found the shirt at the house. So this was, yeah, I found the shirt about well, a week or two later. Um, and like I said, we, we got pictures, all of these pictures from, from being on the Ferris wheel in Atlanta, huggy, huggy, kissy, kissy pictures. Like this man was not trying to hide me. <laughs> like to the, the, that's why my male friends were so upset because it was like, Hey, he was doing everything that a man is supposed to do. That's pursuing you. He is totally pursuing you. And he has you out. He's taking pictures with you know he's with his friends. You are you you meeting folks and you know all kind of stuff. You know you are involved in his world. You know y'all together when he's going to pay these bills. You know he's paying bills. He's driving you around and all of the. All, I mean literally just imagine yourself dating somebody that got you all over town. Someone said maybe he and his wife had an arrangement, but that don't have anything to do with me. And you have to ask me if I want to be a part of the arrangement. Okay. So his arrangement with her, that ain't got, that ain't got nothing to do with me. So for me, it's, uh, it was more of, like I said, he disappeared. That was Mother's Day weekend. And my daughter, I didn't hear from her on Mother's Day weekend. Okay. So it was a very, very emotional time for me. But I, was, I still had to keep what? Keep moving. Well, fast forward to, mm, well, before I go there, something, something happened to me and uh, let's, let's put a pin right here of, of why this was this situation with me being so angry with him caused a, a tr it was a trigger. And here was the trigger. As I told you earlier, I dealt with molestation from my father and stepfather, right? And for me, this man came into my life and triggered how, how I felt as a little girl, things that I thought was gone. And that was my choice was taken away. See, like I said, I don't really, you, I don't really get mad about he say, she say stuff. I don't really am moved by what other people got. You, you really never see me in no, in no mess because Miss Mason is about leaving a legacy, taking care of her kids, taking care of her grandkids. Miss Mason don't be in all of that stuff for stuff. But when you take my choice away, when you were clearly asked and you said, I have been divorced for four years, baby, it was like, It, it did something to me. Okay. Somebody said, y'all want to see, y'all want to know more about the shirt. Okay. Let me, let me, let me tell you the shirt. Since y'all want to know about the shirt. See, this is why people love drama. Y'all, y'all not trying to get to the store. You want to hear about the shirt. He left the shirt at the house. I found it two weeks after he disappeared. And inside of the shirt, it said a woman's name because she took it to the cleaners. It was a tag in the cleaners. Okay. So, I'm getting to all of the other parts because this was about what, three years ago. So I'm getting to all of the other stuff. So that's how I found out um, the, you know, about him being married because I looked up the name on Facebook and it came up. But based upon how she had her social media display, you could only see pictures of her and him. And she... Like when you're married or you're in a relationship, you don't have to tell people that. 
So I could tell this wasn't his first rodeo. And then my girl, um, um, Kim Landers, shout out to my girl, Kim Landers. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Love you, honey. I called my sis. I said, sis, I need to sit down, baby. I need to, we need to have a conversation. And the thing was, I did not say anything after. I never reached out to him again. I didn't. Uh, well, no, actually, one time I did. And that was right after that, right after I found out because there was a line that he gave me when he asked me to move to L.A. from the movie. I think he when he asked me to go to L.A., he said, um, I said, well, are you I said, I don't know about going to L.A. I said, now, because you work for Delta, I could fly free and we, I could hang out. And, because, you know, we were just trying to see if he decided to take the job, the position in at LAX, if um, how will we make how will we still date each other? This joker was trying to have two families. That's all he was trying to do. And so he said, April, I'm a, he said, you have to be what's the that's the line from the movie. You have to be ready to drop everything in 30 seconds or less when heat is around the corner. I remember that. So. When I sent him that last text message that I sent, I remember saying something like, you are the type of man that you warn your daughters about. And my end, I ended it with, I guess he was around the corner because he lived around the corner from me. Okay. So bottom line is, if a person wants to deceive you, they will intentionally deceive you. OK, if a no matter what. So even if my closest male friend that I was running play by play of everything that was going on was saying, OK, hey, you know what? He might he might be on to something. He might be on to something. For them to tell me. That the things that he was doing was lining up. And for them to be confused. Just imagine how confused I was. But the thing is, what I can say is that I sent that last text message and I never said anything else. My ability to accept things is very, very strong. I accept, I, I um, accept the situation. No, I assess the situation. I accept what it is and I decide how I'm going to handle it. There was no need for me to go running around telling his wife, being all upset. Number one, like I said, I wasn't all, I wasn't in love or anything. We were in the we were like what four months in or so. So I wasn't, I didn't, I, I don't relinquish. Like I teach you all, you don't relinquish your emotions to anyone until they have proven that they have um, deserved them and that they earn them. Now, can I enjoy the moment and treat you like a king in, in my um in my presence and we have a great time? Yes, but my emotions are reserved. All right. So after I sent that text, I never said anything else. Never seen him again. Um, and I knew that based upon how his wife had her social media, thank you all for coming to such and such a nice home for my birthday. Well, when I looked at the picture, I'm like, wait a minute, that's the same outfit that he had the picture that he sent me when he came. So you left your wife birthday party. And so we can go hang out. Like, it was that kind of stuff. Like we all had it out at Capitol Grill and it, it was just all kind of, all kind of bottom line, just a raggedy, um, a raggedy man. Okay. Um, so with that, I'm dealing with that. I move on. My daughter and I were not communicating. And you know um, that my, my family and I, my immediate family, we're pretty tight. You know, we are, um, we don't have no, no foolishness between me and my three. You know, now do we bump heads from time to time? Yeah, but just to not outright not talk. And my daughter not reach out to me because she was big mad on Mother's Day. So for him to disappear, Mother's Day, don't, don't hear from daughter, don't hear from grandkids. I'm sitting at my house by myself. And I'm looking like, what's what's going on? So now fast forward, we're gonna leave him alone because we found out, you know, he was a loser. <laughs> And so I was still sitting here trying to figure out some things. So that was, okay, then da, 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 da. fast forward. I'm still moving on. I'm still, you know, getting the hang of this living by myself, being an empty nester. But I had not realized that was, there was something that in, that in, in me that had clicked. Something in me had 
Remember when I always tell you, guard your heart, don't barricade it? There's a reason why I, 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 I say that. And my good friend Joe and I, if you don't hear Joe, hey, boo, we had to really um, talk. We had to really have this conversation because a part of me was numb. And have most of us been played by somebody? Yeah. But I had to ask myself, April, why is this particular thing the thing that numbs you like this? What, why is it that this particular situation and then I had to really do some self-assessing and it was because my choice was taken away like my choice was taken away as a kid so that's why it was so big um you know for me right my dress keep coming up <laughs> that's why it was so big for me because once again it wasn't an in love thing. It wasn't a, oh my God, he's just so, it was just people collecting data and dating. But why did this situation trigger me so hard to where, oh, and Elam, Elam, if you're watching, Elam, Elam let me vent. He let me say what I needed to say. I mean, it was, it, I really was going through it. But the funny thing is, I was getting some of my best Facebook, y'all was getting some of my best Facebook live messages during that time because. I'm a self-reflector, right? I'm a self-reflector. So I, you know, the creator was downloading all these things within me that I needed to, to deal with and change and, and bring some things, you know, to the forefront, okay? So I'm sitting back and, and I'm like, all right, this is this and that is that. And, and I'm spending so much time by myself. And I was like, man, I don't feel like dating right now, but I forced myself to date anyway. Here's why. A lot of times when we feel like we are deceived and something has happened, we shut completely down. Well, another man did not deserve to have to deal with the aftermath of somebody else. And number two, my desire for love outweighed the foolishness that I had gone through. OK, so I made a conscious decision. To continue to date anyway, I live by my 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 teachings. And so my boy Elon was like, April, you got to really you got to tell her. he He's been asking me to tell this story for a long time. You got to tell the story because most women would have just shut down. I took my time to assess it. But what I did not do is shut myself down from um an amazing man getting to meet all of this dopeness okay <laughs> so after that i um, was dating and i was you know having a good time i wasn't necessarily trying to get jump into anything um but i was really more so trying to figure out april what was it about you that attracted that man Boo. Y'all thought I was going to put all the blame on him, didn't you? <laughs> uh -uh. April, what was it that resonated with you that y'all energies were able to connect? Okay. What was it? What was it? Because y'all, you were able to just, because you attract who you are. So what was it about him? Well, I, you know, realized it was, I wasn't really ready for the relationship that I said I was ready for. So I attracted someone that was cool to hang out with. We had fun. We went places. We ate nice places. We, we, you know, we just had fun. But I attracted someone that could not commit to me. Because I was not ready to commit no matter what my mouth said. <laughs> so it made sense. Now, the deception part, all of that foolishness, that that my, it was more taking my choice away, right? But ultimately, when I look past all of the other stuff, I realized it was not anything, it had nothing to do 
but anything but my mouth said something that my heart wasn't really in. Okay. So I always have to look and I always tell you all to look within. So fast forward to last year. Um, last year around no, no March, I came and shared another piece of news with you all. Uh, it was March, because yeah, I was diagnosed in, in eight, 2018. I shared with you all a personal, you know, personal piece of my private life that I was diagnosed with lupus, and it was very emotional for me. And after my, I did a three day teach me how to date boot camp um, in April, and I made the, I made the decision that I was going to create it. My spirit was saying, "Go sit down, go sit down. There's something that I need to get to you. I need you to go sit down." Went, um, I, I did that video. It's on my Instagram and it's on my Facebook page. The full version is on my Facebook. Page. And so I took some time off for eight months or so to figure some things out. This is what I did in that time. Um, I had to give you all a backstory of why I'm going to say some of the things that I'm getting ready um, to share with you. I had to sit down because I realized, you know, I noticed that I, the weight gain came, started coming on again. I started seeing the pattern of when I was married and I gained the weight. Well, what did I realize inside of that? Back then, I was dealing with some emotional things. The weight gain had everything to do with unhealed emotions more than it had to do with anything that I was eating and anything, uh, any exercise that I was not doing. That's why when you all keep asking me, what did you do? What did you change? What did you eat? I got on the path to healing my emotions. So when people talk about losing weight, the first thing they want to do is join the gym they want to go on this these little fad diets, right? But they never seem to work because until you get your emotions in line, you will not keep the weight off. You will not be your best self. We are ran by emotion. That's why so many of us are emotional eaters. So I don't care how many diets you do, the keto, the veto, whatever supplements you take and whatnot, doesn't matter. Now, did I take supplements and things? Yes. I took supplements. I changed my diet and I worked out. But guess what? I had done that before and I still didn't lose the weight or it was upsy, upsy down, topsy turvy, topsy turvy, topsy turvy all the time. So, so many people are looking to be a certain dress size, you know, have a certain waist. Fellas, you want your waist to look like this. You want your chest to be out like that, right? Ladies, you want everything to be where this needs to be. But it was not anything necessarily that I ate or exercise that I did that allowed me to lose the weight and come down to where I am now. I had to heal my emotions. Okay. So with that, I want to ask you, what is it that you're dealing with that you really need to well, what is it that you buried that you need to deal with that you're not? So if you find yourself can't lose weight, your weight is always going up and down, you really need to get go within. Um, for those of you that are looking at the screen on Facebook, I, I put together a free PDF for you. It's absolutely free. You can go to fitfinefeminine.com and you can download it. It's absolutely free to you. There's a lot of the supplements and things that I took that's inside of there. But there's some deeper questions that I ask you inside of that PDF that is going to trigger some things within you. And it's going to come to the surface. Long gone are the days where we tell people, you know, when I posted the before and after picture of myself, people are like, oh, you are beautiful either way. Okay, here's the thing. We have to stop coddling people okay we have to stop trying to be so sensitive if me calling you overweight will keep you alive and cause you to want to do something baby you need to stop being overweight let's see what the problem is with your emotions okay 
I'd rather you be offended with me by saying that you overweight and that BMI is way too much, then you'd be dead and gone. I have had clients that have dealt with molestation as well too, and they are overweight, extremely overweight. And when we got to the root of it, dealing with their emotions, it was, I gained the weight when I was younger because I felt like if I became fat, I would not be violated again. Now they're 50, 55 years old, carrying those same emotions and the physical appearance of those emotions. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so now, you know, every time they look in the mirror, they are reminded of what happened. Okay. Let me see if I can post the link on, um, hold on. Hold on Instagram. Let me see if I can post the link. Uh, I can't post the link, but you can go to fit, fine, feminine or aprilmason.com and click on gift. Okay. <clears throat> um, but we have to really start to deal with the emotion, our emotions. So last year when you guys didn't see me, I went hard in the paint to figure out my emotions and what had I not gotten over. So number one, I accepted that I was not as healed as I thought I was. Ooh, ooh. Things come into our lives and trigger. When people come into your life, they are can be a mirror to what you need to fix. So one of the things that I did is I started diving into information that would help me. So one of the books that I read, and if, if when you download your PDF, <clears throat> I put a link to it. It's called um, The Emotion Code, baby. And those of you that are in my Teach Me How to Date VIP Academy, that was actually one of the books that we read. We we do um, we read books in there. We don't just hear Miss April talk, but we read books, things that I believe that can help the ladies. Um, we read, you know, we do. Okay. So the book Emotion Code, it talks about how your emotions, thank you, Fly, Fly Girl Sam, how your, um, how your emotions are um, lodged in your body when you have not healed. Hmm. And I was like, whoa. But see, this is how the universe works. When I made a decision to heal my emotions, there was a movie that came across my screen. I think it's on the Gaia app or Gaia app. It's called Emotions. Go watch it. I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. This is so freaking on point, which caused me to look at some of the people that were um, talking inside of the movie and look them up. So one of them had a book called The Emotion Code. And that book changed the game for me. Okay. So I, st I read the book and then inside of their, the book, they have people inside, uh, people that will go through the emotional, um, it's like going to a uh, practitioner, but you're going to someone to help you with your emotions. Shout out to Peggy. Peggy, I went to Peggy. So I looked on the Emotion Code website and I found someone that could help me um, figure out the emotion, the emotion. Matter of fact, do I have it sitting in here? Let me see. Or did I? No, I know where I put it. Um, so I found Peggy and what she does is you sit down and we do, we start talking. We don't really necessarily talk about the past, but in the book, it talks about how to find out areas of your life where you need healing. So somebody's read it. Somebody said the emotion code is an excellent book. It helped me understand what I'm going through. Absolutely. So download Fit, Fine, and Feminine. Go to Fit, Fine, and Feminine and download the PDF that I gave you because I have a list of all of the things that I did. Oh, I have a short list. Now, there was more, but I didn't want to over overwhelm you. Um, when you go to Fit, Fine, and Feminine on Instagram and follow me, I'll be giving you more and more information uh, because that's the page where I'm going to be um, inspiring you, encouraging you, giving you some of my recipes and things that I did because I did change my diet. That was a part of my 
um, losing weight. So, but it started with dealing with my emotions. There's so many people who are dealing with hurt and pain and grief. What you focus on is what you will feel. Let me say that again. What you focus on is what you will feel. So I had to really dive into my emotions and figure some things out because um, I did not have the type of relationship with my mother or my father that I should have had. And I found out so many things of why I am the way that I am just this past Christmas because my mother got the courage to open up. And she let some things out that I, that blew my mind, you know, and it made it made me make sense because I had never felt like I belonged because out of all my grandparents, grandkids, um, they all have everybody got the same daddy but me. I was only out of what like it went like grandchild. Mm. And I felt displaced. I always felt different. And in addition to figuring out my emotions, I wanted to figure out more about me. Well, I found out that my personality type, the Myers-Briggs personality test, I had taken it years ago and I retook it and everything stayed the same. I am what's called an ENFJ personality type. Out of the 16 personality types, I am the ENFJ. And Less than 3% of the population are ENFJs, 3% of women, and 2% of men are ENFJs. Um, some famous ENFJs include Oprah, Pope John Paul, um, uh, Martin Luther King, Dr. Phil. Um, so I fell inside of that ENFJ personality type. Also, um, with that, it made, that made me understand me so much more. And I'm going to read you a little bit about the personality of a ENFJ and why it makes sense. It'll make sense to you why I do what I do. Cause I had to figure this out. It says ENFJs are driven by a deep sense of um, empathy for other people. They have an intuitive sense of the, of the emotions of others and often act as an emotional uh, barometer for people around them. However, their compassion is not reserved for the people close to them. They are often humanitarians in nature and may feel genuine concern for the ills of the entire human race. They tend to personally experience the feelings of others and feel compelled to act when they see people suffering. So it made, it made me make sense. When I tell y'all, I, I went in hard and I was diving into who I am. So the next step after I did that, some of you may not believe in this, but I do. I had a 13 point natal chart done. Astrology. When I tell you, <laughs> it was so accurate. Not this, let me look at my Zodiac. No, it wasn't that. It wasn't that at all. It was Oh my God, this breaks me all the way down. So for instance, um, let me see where did I put it. I found out uh, because I'm like, why do I talk about love so much? Why is that so important to me and all of these things? And I found out that my Venus is in Leo. When I tell you, it broke me all the way down. So let me read you this. this is, and I had this done. Um, maybe 2018, 2019, it says Venus and Leo people, you enjoy fun and creativity within relationships. You will take great pride in your partner. You will also value appearance and may be proud of your possessions. Venus and Leo indicates a thoroughly outgoing, affectionate, um, constant, passionate, and warm hearted, romantic nature, devoted and loyal in marriage. You tend to shower extravagant gifts on the object of your affection, often throwing in lavish parties just to make sure they are happy. When you do marry, it is for love, not social, um, or pra social pra or practical or financial gain. Your infectious love of life and noble nature ensures 
um, societal popularity. Um, <laughs> you usually choose a partner you can show off with and proudly display to friends and family because you must be with a partner that you feel proud of. And it says Venus in the 11th house. You attract many friends and enjoy socializing with groups of people. You may take on peacemaking role within groups. Now, <laughs> no, I'm not a Leo. See, here's the thing. So I, this is why I mean I went, I dive really deep into wanting to know how I'm wired. So, you know, once again, I was raised in church and taught was taught astrology was wrong, right? But yet they didn't understand the very thing that they were teaching us of how the disciples followed the stars and, and the sun and all of these things is nothing more than astrology. So for me, it's, I had to challenge what I believed and why they said it was so bad, but yet it broke my personality down and how I'm wired to a teacher where it was like a light bulb that comes on. So a lot of us, we, be, we don't believe in things or we believe in things based upon somebody else's self-imposed belief. I had to understand there's nothing wrong with astrology when you are trying to figure out how you're white. I said, What's in, what was interesting to me was like, wow, we've been made to believe that God is so small that he only put, um, he only gave one particular religion or people a way of understanding the different mysteries of how we were created. So I was like, okay, let me find that out. So I did the emotional code. I went and I had a, a natal chart done. I had never done that before, but when I tell you, um, the whole, like I said, this is not, this wasn't a, 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 let me look and see what my zodiac, my cancer, okay, my birthday, June, I'm a cancer, what to say for today. It wasn't that. That's basic. That's what most people are thinking. I actually was in contact with a young lady who was amazing and she, it, it was so on point. I'm like, this makes so much sense. So I did that, got the emotional code. I went and sat down with um, Peggy, who is a, she was trained. She went through the certification. If you read the book or listen to the book on Audible, you'll hear that um, they have people that they train to help others uh, break through their emotions. So I went and drove out to Sandy Springs, um, went to her home, and we sat there and we start really diving in. And she mentioned something about my health. Now, let me go back. Let me go back. I have a friend. He's not a psychic. He doesn't call himself a psychic or a prophet or anything. He just says, April, you know, the creator just shows me things. So one day, hey, Big Meech, I'm talking about you. I was over there chilling with Big Meech and we were talking. And he told me, hey, sis, what's going on with your health? And this was before I was diagnosed with lupus. He said, what's going on with your health? I said, what do you mean? He was like, just go, go to the doctor, get your health checked. Okay, I waited. Finally got my health checked. That's what came back as lupus. I did not tell Peggy. I went to go see Peggy months later. I did not tell Peggy um, what the issue was. Um, Instagram, if I go off, I'll come right back. Um, I didn't tell her what was going on. But when we start going through, um, she through my history, and she was like, um, April, you have to give me permission to... Um, you know, to ask you questions. And I said, okay, I'll give you permission. She says, does the April, has the April dealt with any trauma at what age, you know, and, 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 and it came back because you, you can actually do it yourself. I just didn't know how to do it. Um, so I want to go with her and I've actually learned how to do it myself because your body can react in a way that tells you things that are going on. So she did it. And then it stopped. It says trauma. Okay. And it said, what age was April? And she's like, was it one, two? three to four, and she went down the line, and when it stopped, it, start, it, it started at five. That's when the molestation started. So I'm say, telling you this because so many people only believe in one way, but yet their hearts are broken. Their lives are messed up, right? They are not living their best life because I was told that's spooky. That's this, that's that. But Nobody has actually explained it. Our ancestors would call upon the spirit of God to heal, to see things. But yet we've been bombarded with spooky, scary, you know, everything in religion is wrong. I said, you know what? This ain't work. 
So let me dive in deeper. And I, I remember saying, creator, God, show me me. And this is was the steps that I took to find out, you know, who April Mason is. And it's just things that started to make so much sense to me at that point. So went to see Peggy. After I seen Peggy, I ended up meeting, no, while I'm with Peggy, Peggy is also someone that healed herself of cancer. Okay, hold on. Uh, the, how do I do it? I don't know how to, I don't know. Oh yeah, Big Meech was watching. I don't know how to share it on Instagram no more and save it. I don't know how to do that. Do it save now? How do you, do anybody know how to do that? Because now it gives me share to IGTV, download video or delete video. Um, how, does anybody know how to do that? Uh, da, 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 da. Yes, the different the different mysteries, yes, of how we are created. People will say, no, I don't do astrology. That's of not the devil. That's if you do your research, you'll realize it's really not of the devil. We we will be, we would be very limited in our thinking to really believe that the creator only gave Christians or Muslims or people that believe in Buddhism or Hinduism the mysteries of how we're created. That 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 right there would show our limited view of the creator limited view i think we all have pieces just like people use religion and christianity as um for bad some use it for good you know some people that had folks enslaved use christianity was it right no it wasn't you know so we have to really ask ourselves why we believe you know what we believe um Okay, it says share to share to IGTV. That's what you're saying. Share it and save to your page. Okay, hold on. Let me let me share it. Hold on. Let me see. Uh, let me see. Okay, I'm gonna sh I'm gonna share it. How? Hold on, y'all. I'm sorry. How I lost the weight. Okay. And so I can set, so then I can do this again over here. Because this, this is different. This is different now. They keep changing things. Hold on. I'm going to get to the other pieces. How I lost the weight, I'll call it part one. Uh, and also, I want to share this with you. When you ask, okay, I better say this when I go live on Instagram so they can hear it too. Okay. Video is uploading. All right, well, I'm still uploading, so I can't, I can't say it. I'll say, it, I'll say it for you all. When you ask for answers, when you ask the creator to give you information, right? You cannot decide what way you are going to receive it. Okay? You can't do that. You have to be open to receive it how it comes. So for me, if it came through um, being at Big Meech's house and uh, he say, check your health, and he doesn't, he doesn't subscribe to no religion um, or anything like that, for me to be able to have um, a, a, a natal chart done and I found out information that really showed me me uh, and it just made me say, wow, I've been playing small all of this time. I've been playing small because I didn't know my greatness because I didn't understand. Okay. Um, it's under my uh Miss April, Miss April Mason on IG. I'm not on Fit Fine and Feminine. Okay. So you have to ask yourself, do I really want to know 
what I need to fix? And if I do want to know, am I going to reject the way that the creator may come? Okay. Well, I mean, may send it. And that's where so many people miss it. I never would have thought that I would have had a natal chart done because I was told, taught that that was so wrong and it's of the devil and it's not of God and blah, blah, all of this bull crap. But when I say, when I read it and it, and I sent it to my daughter and I sent it to my, my boy, Joe, he was like, hey, I said, Joe, this makes so much sense of why I do what I do. It makes so much sense why I choose people in my life to be close to me the way that I do. It makes so much sense why I'm in the field that I'm in because I had to, I wanted to know how I was wired. So the, I did that. Then, um, yes, Stephanie, a weight has been lifted. Yes, because I had to know. You have, you, I had to know. And the thing is, People will reject things because they're not familiar with it or because of somebody else's belief system that they put on them. A lot of times uh, things that we believe are not necessarily our beliefs that we came up with. It's beliefs that others have self-imposed upon us. And I just, I made the decision. I said, all right, God, all right, what, what is, what's going to do? I said, I need to know why I am the way that I am and, and I need to know. I said, because I cannot continue to do what I do and for the people, and I'm not feeling like I, I'm understanding, okay? So I did that. After that, I went plant-based. And you guys get to see me. Look, I'll be in the kitchen cooking uh, my little uh, stuff. What did I cook recently? I've learned how to make raw vegan cheese no i didn't make the cheesecake i made a raw vegan sweet potato pie i made a raw vegan key lime pie i make uh chicken and waffles out of portobello mushrooms um spelt waffles uh i know how to make uh raw vegan tacos now i don't do everything raw vegan because sometimes i do want a hot meal um but i will always make sure that it's plant-based uh as and gluten free um so i went um to i met with y'all got to see i dr bobby price we did a 30-day detox uh with him that ended up very very well um and he's helped me through some things there's some other detoxes that i i took uh as well so i have to pick the one that works best um you're for me you say i'm making y'all hungry y'all my my vegan meals be on point. Uh, my especially my um my spaghetti, ooh, kill them. It be on point. So I did change my diet, okay. And it made me see things a lot clearer because once again, you can be on a raw vegan diet. You can be on plant based. You know, straight plant based. You could be vegetarian. You could be on all of these things. But if your emotions are not in place. You ever see overweight vegans? Mm -hmm. You ever see? It's a reason for that. It's a reason for that. So the thing is, once you get your emotions together, hey, Black Lotus, she worked at one of my favorite restaurants, loving it live. I, I was a rebel over there in one of the best plant-based uh, raw vegan restaurants to me in the United States. I think uh, when I went in there uh, not too long ago, they told me that Essence named them number two raw vegan um, restaurants in the country. One of my favorites. I'm, I'm a regular, regular over there. Um, but until your emotions are healed, no matter what supplements you take, no matter any of that, it does not matter. All that fried tofu. No, I don't eat tofu because that's not real food. Mm. I eat real food like this right here. Oh, and thank you to my ladies. I told y'all I've been using my glass. My ladies from Teach Me How to Date VIP Academy got me a, a, a glass. Um, but yeah, I don't eat fake food. 
So I don't do tofu. I don't do soy. When you guys see me cooking in the kitchen, I am cooking real food. Okay. So I had to, number one, heal my emotions. So it doesn't matter. I don't care what you take. If you do not heal your emotions, you're still going to be overweight. I knew that when I was diagnosed with lupus, I wanted to be here for my grandchildren. I wanted to be here um, for my children. I wanted to do more in my life. I wanted to get remarried again. I wanted to be an asset, not a liability. If any of you have read my book, do I have it one here? Um, no, I don't have one here. Um, are you an asset? 11 keys to being a woman who brings more to the table than her appetite. One of the things that um, I, the chapters in that book is a woman that is about her health. Y'all out here trying to be boss chicks and bad bitches and getting these coins. You need to be that same way and aggressive about your emotional health and your physical and uh, mental health. Okay. What you think about is what you bring about. So many of us have been constantly uh, replaying the same things over and over and over and over and over and over and over again that we're constantly recreating our past. We're using our ability to create, but because we're so stuck in our emotions, we keep recreating the same stuff over and over again. So you try to mask it with going to get the money. You try to mask it with the makeup. You try to mask it with the clothes and, and all of these other things. But what you're not realizing is, sis, you buy more waist trainers because you ain't trying to lose no weight. I can see if you buying them and you're trying to train your waist and you're doing what you're supposed to do. No, you're trying to conceal right? You're not paying attention that you went from a small to a medium to a large to an extra large to a 2x to a 3x to a 4x to a 5x all because you're not in tune with you. You're just looking at it as, oh, let me go. Let me go get these, you know, some bigger pants. I realized that I became a lardo and I can say this to myself because at 5'3", I was a lardo. And I remember being married and I walked past the mirror at Walmart and that was the first time that I saw me. I wasn't paying attention to, April, you don't went from a size six to a size 16. You no longer wearing jeans, you wearing jeggings. But because I was no, not in tune with my emotions, because I was in a bad marriage, I wasn't paying attention. Because of all of the things that happened and traumas that happened in my life, I never took the time to actually grieve. I kept moving because I got these kids. I ain't got time. I got to make sure all of this is together. Okay? You're not paying attention. You're just on the go. You go from a size 10. Now you look up this year, you know, you a size 18. You're not paying attention. And you're eating more, but you're not really realizing I'm emotionally eating. So instead of eating more and being more willing to buy bigger clothes, be willing to get into them emotions. Okay. Be willing to tune in. Go look in your closet and look at all of the stuff that you can't wear no more. And unless you got a health condition, okay, unless you got a health condition. And even with a health condition, your emotion plays a big part. I ended up with lupus because of my emotions. And we figured that out. I was holding on to the things that were triggering me. I didn't realize I was triggered. So the lupus does not run in my family or anything. When I had my back surgery in 2000, and I was 32 at the time, 30, 32. I remember being in that home, that hospital bed for seven for seven days, nine hour surgery, and I hear I heard the Creator clearly say, "This is due to unforgiveness. All of my tension from my anger that I was holding in, it went to my lower back. It made now. It, now that was in two thousand. That was in two thousand seven. So it made fast forwarding." reading the emotion code in 2019, it made it all make sense that my emotions were lodged in the lower part of my back, which caused it to deteriorate that disc, which caused me to have to have a nine hour surgery and have a metal plate, a fusion inserted. 
Okay. So I'm speaking from experience. I happen to get it down the line, but 2007, me hearing clearly, it was due to unforgiveness. And then in 2019, running across a book called The Emotion Code, and he's talking about how we have diseases in our bodies and our bodies break down due to emotional issues and it triggered. It hit me. Oh, heck. This is what I heard back then. But here is scientific proof to what I believed. So if you want to get on the road to healing, start with your emotions. Once again, go to feminine, I mean, excuse me, find fit feminine. If you're watching this video on Instagram, I mean, excuse me, on Facebook, the link is right there on the screen, the, the email, I mean, excuse me, the website. I'm giving you a free PDF. And it gives you a link to the book and everything else that I've um, used. You guys have asked me about my workout equipment. I have workout equipment at home, but I'm going to tell you something. I'm not an avid gym person. So, yes, I changed my diet. Yes, I start working out more. But guess what? I only work out 30 minutes a day. And that could be in some of the workout equipment that I got in the house. Or that could be on a walk, a 30-minute walk, because y'all know I like being out with nature. I start dropping the weight when I healed my emotions. So if I had not started, got on the road to healing my emotions, it doesn't matter how many reps I did, how many sit-ups I did, how many times I got on uh, my mountain climber downstairs, I got a little vibration plate, all that kind of stuff, it wouldn't have mattered. Because you see people all the time that are constantly doing the fitness part, the eating right, and they can't lose the weight. It's not that. I do less fitness work and lose more weight than I ever have. I had to get into the mental work, the heart work, the emotion work. Now I got myself on this, I'm on my vibration plate because I like my vibration plate. And I'm doing 30 days on my vibration plate, 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes in the evening. And I'm doing, I have a sauna booth. I gave us a link to all of that stuff inside this free PDF. And um, I get in my sauna booth and in my little portable sauna booth, I put tea tree oil, eucalyptus oil, peppermint oil um, inside of it. And um, I get in the sauna booth and I, I thought it was going to be a joke. Like what is this thing, little thing going to do? Baby, I'll be drenched when I come out of there. And I, it opens up my pores while all of these essential oils are, are absorbing into my skin, honey. All right? So this, these are the things that I'm doing. But the thing that I'm giving you, it doesn't require a lot. Not only am I doing that, my supplements that I take, I listed those supplements. One of the things that really has helped me, like really, really has helped me that I, I didn't really think it would. I just thought it was like kind of a fad or something like that. Yes. Nutriburst, my teas. When I tell you, like I said, I get people reaching out to me all the time, asking me to be a part of this and do this and, and all of that kind of stuff, right? And I'm like, anybody doing that? Because they see, okay, you got over 200,000 followers on Facebook and you got these followers on Instagram and YouTube and all that. You know, everybody's trying to get me to buy into stuff. And I'm like, no, 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 no. And I, on my own, said, let me try this. I started it and I'm hooked. I have this, I have the Nutri Burst, I have the N NRG. And when I tell you, it is so potent and on point. I thought it was just a, a fad. Not only do I take it, I said, well, hell, I need to get everybody that I know a part of this. I became, a, a, what do you call it? One of the people, you can, you, oh my, well, I got a website and all that. I, I, I bought into it because I believe in it so much because I have been using it for a while. Um, and so now... Um, in the in the PDF that I give you, you can click on the link. Uh, my daughter is my daughter is in it. My family is in it. And the thing with, with this for me was everybody's talking about becoming you know recession proof and all of the stuff and and uh, 
wearing masks and, and money and all of these things, right? But what they're not paying attention to is we're telling people to wear these masks because of the bad immune system. We're not teaching people to get their health in order. Okay? Um, where do you get it from? Go to my link. Go, go to the, um, the link that Fit, Fine, and Feminine. Click on it. Um, click on it. And there's a link directly to this. There's a link directly to um, the Emotion Code book. There's a link directly to several of the things that I mentioned that I that I do. Um, there's a link directly on that. But um, I started taking it, and I look. I even take mine to another level. So I mix my my tea with this is lime juice, orange juice, uh, freshly squeezed orange juice, and grapefruit juice, and I put a tablespoon of vitamin C powder which one tablespoon is 2,500 milligrams. And I mix that in there and I mix this in here and I take it, is it sour? Yes. But I'm getting all of it, I'm getting it all in um, at one time, okay? Somebody said, uh, how do you take the tea plain? I just put, I, I drink normally, if I drink it in this, um, it's just put it in there and drink it in there or I will uh, boil some water and um, I have, shout out to Moon Jug. Uh, Moon Jug is a company that I get my uh, big five gallon of uh, alkaline water from. And I'll warm that up on the stove and I'll mix my um, tea in there and I'll drink it like that. So make sure you go to here. Let me put the link um, for that up there. Um, so you guys can uh, see it. And you can go there. And it's also a great way for people that have been, y'all been inboxing me, asking me about how to make some more money, right? That's a way to make some more money as well, too. I signed up. Um, not necessarily because it, it's more of a money thing for me, but more from the standpoint of people need to be told about their health. We got people running around um, scared and carrying on. But we're not telling them to get healthy, boost up your immune system. So how I boost my immune system and how I uh, lose and drop the weight. I got maybe I got some kind of rolls back here that I want to get rid of. I got I have a, a version of myself that I see. Um, and so I got some back fat back here that I'm still trying to get rid of. So I heal my emotions. I still got on the road to healing my emotions. I. um went and changed my diet so i'm more plant-based uh plant-based vegetarian but more so plant-based i work out but i only do 30 minutes i show y'all be doing on my instagram stories i find videos on youtube and i just be up there dancing and whatnot i got a couple things downstairs um i did i did um opt in for my sauna booth so that I can, um, you know, sweat. I'm not a big sweater. I really have to work hard to um, to sweat. But I did that. I get my essential oils. I watch Kareem the Herbalist on YouTube. Like everything that I'm suggesting to you is not things that somebody gave me. It's I took responsibility for my health. And I start doing the research, okay? And I found what actually works for me. So 30 minutes of workout a day, whether it's walking, but here's the thing, I think in the, um, in the free PDF I gave you, um, I went, I talk about meditation in the morning. What do I do? I get up. There's a, I have a playlist on my YouTube that, that I have for private playlist. It's 10 minute morning meditation. Then I do my 10 minute stretch yoga. After I do that, I go get on my vibration plate for 10 minutes, 10 or 15 minutes, and then, you know, have different little exercises you can do on it. Then I'll go sit in my sauna for about uh, 15 minutes, and boom, there you have it. Then I will go, and uh, later on in the day, I'll go do a walk or something like that, but I get out um, of the house, and I walk around my neighborhood, or I'll go walk around the little lake around here, Okay. So any, everything that I'm showing you is not anything that requires a whole heck of a lot of money or a lot of, um, you know, for you to just go be, just go broke behind. No, 
But guess what? If you can spend money on bundles of hair and everything else that are superficial, it shouldn't bother you to spend money on uh, your health. Um, do you have a link to the sauna booth included also? Yes, the link to the sauna booth is inside of the PDF as well. Because y'all been asking me, um, uh, you know, about that. My son came to came home today and was like, Ma, I see you, little sauna booth. I'll be seeing you online in your little sauna booth. Don't touch my sauna booth, boy. Don't you touch my sauna booth. Don't touch my sauna booth. Now, I put essential oils in my water. So when you could, well, if you decide to order the sauna booth, here's, here's the kicker. Here's the thing. You can, you put the water in the little thing. It's so easy. Put the water in it, plug it up, and then give it time to warm up. And the next thing you know, it's all kind of steam coming up out of there. But this is what I do. I get my essential oils, or if you're going to order this on a booth, order some essential oils as well, too, because that eucalyptus, it opens up your pores and everything. That's another thing that I did. Um, I learned how to make um, aromatherapy thing steamers for my bathroom. Y'all saw, I think you can see them on my, my Instagram that I made, and I've made some eucalyptus uh, peppermint steamers. So when I get in the shower, all, I, I'm, all them vapors is opening me all up. I ended up making my own Vicks vapor rub. So everything that I'm doing to heal myself, I started from the inside out, but I had to take responsibility for my life. Okay? Take responsibility for my life. Um, it doesn't matter if you drink the tea hot or cold. It's all about you. Every, it's all about you. I don't want you guys to overcomplicate anything. I, I gave it to you as simple as possible. Don't overthink it. Don't overcomplicate it because the more you overthink a thing, the more you think your way out of not doing it. The more you do more research and research and research, research is a, uh, what, do I, what did I tell y'all in the boot camp? Research is a way to say, I'm going to procrastinate. OK. So don't overcomplicate it. If you want to do it, do it, do what you can, but take your health seriously. But it doesn't matter, darlings, if you go get everything that I put on that list of what I use on a daily. If you do not make a commitment. To healing your emotions. To your mental health. None of it's going to work. You're going to always be on the next diet. Uh, the next, you know, fat. And here's the thing. Every diet works. Every diet works. The reason why it doesn't work is your belief system, your level of dedication and discipline. But before you do anything. You got to get in tune with those emotions. Okay. It's all about the emotions. Okay. Does essential oils throw off your pH balance? I'm nervous about putting that in my bath. I don't put it in my bath. I put it in my, in my steamer. So um, a sauna booth is not a bath. It's like sitting in the sauna. I sit in there with no clothes on or, um, some, some, uh, a little sports bra and some boy boy uh, boy shorts, and I sit in there. So it's like it's like going to the spa. So do your research. Um, do your research, okay? I'm finally free from divorce. Where do I start to heal? Oh, this is good. I remember when I went through my divorce, and um, and my I wrote about it in my very first book. And I talked about how I had to realize what attracted me, why I said I do, the lesson that was learned. I don't blame him for anything because where I was vibrating at at the time is what attracted him. And the thing is, I didn't know about being my higher self or being my conscious self. Okay. So you start healing by making the choice to heal. The fact, uh, who said that? Michelle, that you said. That, <clears throat> excuse me, that means you're already open. Here's the thing, though. Now that you want to heal, 
be open to how it comes because here's the thing sometimes healing comes through other people and this was a lesson that i had to learn a long time ago so many times we believe that we have to be in a particular place in our life for love to find us and we believe that we have to be totally healed and whole and just walking around here like oh everything is just all great now i did a video maybe a couple of weeks ago that says you don't have to be healed for love to find you but here's the thing we should be on the road to becoming our best selves and healing ourselves right but many times we can miss that healing or we can prolong it because someone may come into our life or want to or desire to come into our life but because we feel like we're not our best selves we won't let them enter we want to we want to uh build up you know some some more wholeness first i want you all to get into the the mindset of being free Free of beliefs that have been holding you back. Free of believing that things have to happen a certain way. Some people, you know, some of you in your heart, you desire love so much and you crave love, right? But because you might be grieving right now, because you might be, and I feel like you have, a, have enough uh, money or your living situation ain't right, you won't allow anybody in. But here's the thing because your energy is craving love you're going to attract people that love you not necessarily people um you want to attract people that can that are going to come into your life because of what you're dealing with what you're dealing with is a byproduct what your soul is craving what your energy is craving is what you're going to attract so so many people believe that if i'm grieving behind a divorce right now or if um I'm, I'm and i say this because i have several friends who have lost spouses right but they still love love they still love love they still love love and they felt very guilty when they met someone shortly after like uh-uh my husband ain't been dead and gone. My wife ain't been dead and gone but for a few minutes. What, 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 how would that make me look? What would that make me look like? And you know, me being that friend, that in, in, in my that ENFJ in me. Wait a minute. You love companionship. You don't want to be alone. Your re your energy is resonating as somebody that's open to love, but your mouth is saying. I'm not going to do this because of what others may think. So you're vibrating love. You're attracting love, but you want to build up some more grief. So you can say, okay, at least I grieve for six months. At least I grieve for, you know, a year. Think about that. Think about that. So I say that, Michelle, to say, don't be surprised. For those of you that have met my, my, uh, my other mama, you know, my spiritual mom, I tell you guys her story often. She knew that she wanted to be remarried. She was going through a divorce, but she knew that she was designed to be a wife. And she did not allow her going through a divorce to stop her from what she believed she is. She's a wife. She was start, she met, she was going through her divorce at the end of her divorce. August, she met Tommy on Plenty of Fish. Now, they met in person in October. No, no, September 6, 2015. They met in person. They met on a dating site in August. Now she's grieving, going behind, uh, you know, because you know, she's going through this divorce of after 10 years of marriage, right? She's grieving. He just stepped out on her the whole night. So her heart is broken. But even with her heart being broken, she knows I am still a freaking wife. Right? So they meet August 2015. They meet in person September 8th. 
Her divorce was final in October. She and Tommy got married in front of all of us September 8th of 2016, but they snuck off and got married two months before the wedding. So I'm saying this because I don't want you to feel like I have to go by all of these particular rules. Okay. I don't want you to feel like if I don't do it the way they say that it should be done, then I'm doing something wrong. I'm not, I, I hate when people say you got to be comfortable in your singleness. We don't even come into the world single. Or well, no, let me take that back. We don't come into the world by ourselves. We have gotten so accustomed to following these rules. If you like companionship, there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. When you are born, you are born with people around you. We are meant to be connected. Do I believe you should start working on yourself first? Yes. But that could be, you make a decision right now, watching Miss April, you know what? I'm going to go get that book emotion code and I'm going to start working on myself. You can meet the love of your life tomorrow. Why? Because you made a conscious shift to make a different choice to change your life. Your life ain't totally got to be changed for the shift to happen. Okay? It don't have to, it don't have to, you don't have to have seen the fruits of it. You can just say, you know what? That's it. I'm tired of being scared of love. I'm tired of feeling like I'm not good enough. I am making a choice right now because Miss April said, I need to deal with my emotions. I need to figure out why do I feel the way that I feel? What are the triggers? Why do I feel abandoned? Why do I feel rejected? Who hurt me? Why do I cry behind things that happened years ago as though they uh, felt, seem like they happened just yesterday? Why? Why, 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 why? Those are the things that you need to start working on. But the moment you make a conscious decision and sincere decision, to do that, you can meet the love of your life just like that. Okay? Question what you believe and why you believe it. Period. When I got onto this road of once that trigger happened and I got on this road to healing, I questioned everything. Every why do you believe that? Who told you that? Did that work for them? Okay, and I ain't working for them. So why do I believe that? Mm -mm, that's not what we're doing. If you say, you know what? I am healthy. I don't, I'm not believing what the doctors say. I am healthy. I am healed. The more you believe and change the energy and your thought process, scientifically, it is proven that it'll start to change the cells of your body and you can heal yourself through your mind. Why do you think in every religion they talk about the mind? Because the mind is the motherboard. It controls everything. Okay. Um, will this be recorded, April? I thought it was recorded on Instagram. If you don't see it on Instagram, um, it's going to be saved on Facebook because I don't know what Instagram didn't change my little settings, so I don't know how to use them <laughs> um, right now. But it will be on uh, Facebook. And make sure you go to fitfinefeminine.com um, and get your free PDF. Everything that I mentioned tonight is listed inside of that free PDF, okay? Um, if you want to know the book and everything, all of that is listed inside of um, the PDF. All right. Because I wonder, I, I don't want to just give you, um, share my story with you. I wanted to give you also the tools that I use. So um, it's pinned, right? It should be pinned. You, you should be able to pin it. I mean, you should be able to see the pin. Um, thank you for being transparent. It's hard opening up to people not knowing if they understand or think you're weak. We are strong. I say, I don't care. That's the thing. I don't care about that. I don't care what people think. Uh, I don't care what people have to say. You know why? Because April Mason has gotten so comfortable in her skin. Now, do I take critics, constructive criticism and do I hear what my mentors and, um, um, those that, that I go to counsel for have to say, yes. 
I do. But at the end of the day, I'm so comfortable in my skin. Like I said, I'm not really moved by things that I deem are trivial. If it's not of my family, if it's not affecting my family, it's not affecting my finances, it's not affecting my health. I normally don't, I'm normally not really moved like that. And I got that way because I started to understand being an empath, I had to learn how to have boundaries around my emotions and what I was going to let in and what I wasn't going to let in. So prior to understanding that I am an empath, I had to, uh, I didn't have boundaries. So people, it would feel like they were emotional vampires. And so I used to coach people all the time and it felt like they were draining my energy because I didn't have boundaries. And people, when you are a person that the creator has given wisdom to and in a leadership position and one that can cause people to think and you 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 speak from a genuine place, you attract a lot of people and people want to tell you their problems all the time. And I didn't I didn't know how to create um, boundaries. I have those now. But prior to that, I was always drained. So once I understood boundaries and how to really uh, put myself first and do real self-care, I ain't talking about maintenance. Get nails, hair, pedicures, um, massages. That's maintenance. That's not self-care. I'm talking about self-care from an emotional standpoint. Checking in with me. Okay. Checking in with April. How do you feel? Another thing that I had to do, and I want you to do this as well. Ask yourself what's most important to you right now. Is it money? Is it attracting that special relationship? Because a lot of you sitting at home in this quarantine and you realize you're by yourself. You're doing everything by yourself. Okay? What's important to you? I had to ask myself. So I had to shift my list. Okay? I had to totally shift my list of my priorities and be honest with myself. And you got to do the same thing. What is your biggest priority right now? And are you willing to do what needs to be done to make the shift? If it's a relationship that you want, are you willing to dig deep with inside your emotions? Isn't it, self, isn't it amazing that you can lay on a operating table? They can cut you wide open. Got your heart and everything just wide open, right? but you won't see any emotions. They can't go in and open you up and fix the, your heart emotions, the emotions that are connected to your heart. They can't open you up and fix the pain you feel from being rejected and abandoned. They can have your chest wide open. And the doctors cannot heal your emotion. This is something that you have to take the journey to do. But I just want you to be open and free to receive it any way it happens. For me, it was multiple different things. Like I said, I had a natal chart done to find out how I'm wired and it was so on point. And I was like, so all my life, my family told me astrology was evil, but yet this 13, how many pages, how many pages is this? It is how many pages? Uh, this piece of paper, uh, how many pages? How many pages is this? Oh, these 12 pages gave me so much insight and resonated with me on so many different levels of how I'm wired. Me having the aha moments that 
my back surgery was because of unforgiveness and emotions that were lodged in my body to being diagnosed with 2000 in 2018 with lupus and finding out finding that book emotion code and realizing oh my god emotions can be lodged in your body and cause you disease okay so how i lost the weight i told you it ain't what you thought <laughs> i had to get on the road to healing my emotions and being honest with myself about what i really wanted in my life and being okay with wanting that being okay with saying what it is to those that are close to me you know my 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 um my uh secure circle okay it played a huge part for me and also i knew that i wanted to remarry again but i even after i started looking at my emotions and the men even even attracting the married man and all that stuff I had to get my emotions on, on, a, on a particular page because I didn't want to attract that any, again. So I wanted someone who was on the road to healing as well, too. Did he, did he have to be totally healed? No. Nope. Did he have to be totally fit and got muscles? And I do like muscles, though. But do he, did he have to be, like, so uh, into fitness? No. All he had to do was be on the same road that I was on. So if I did not want to attract the same thing again, I needed to work on me because once again, you attract what you are, okay? Yes, Loretta, ancient wisdom and science back everything you're saying up tonight. Thank you so much. I didn't, I just didn't know. And it's the boom, bang, pow, everything started coming. So I'm like, all right, hey, this is what you need to do. If you want a man that's into um self-care into healing his emotions because when you meet him his emotions might not be all the way healed because here's the thing the presence of who you are could be the thing that heals somebody the presence of who somebody else is could be the thing that heals you let me say that again the presence of who somebody is meaning they're in your life they're not doing anything spectacular they're just being who they are is enough to heal your soul. Your presence is enough to heal somebody else's soul. So everybody wants somebody perfect, but nobody is perfect. Somebody said, do you think you can be overweight and healthy? No, I don't. Because if you're overweight, Something is going to cause an issue, whether it's joint pain, whether it's something. I, I personally, if you're asking me, no. I'm not saying you got to be my size. I'm not saying you got to be a size zero. I'm saying you have to be healthy. And at this time, what's going on in our country right now, it shouldn't be a fight for I'm big bone. It ain't no such thing as big bones. <laughs> okay? Quit all of that. Sis, let's get these emotions together so we can lose this weight. Let's let go of what had happened. I know we done been divorced. We didn't hurt. Our feelings have been hurt. We didn't. No, you're not big boned. You just, we just eating stuff. We eating and we ain't moving. Our emotions got us sitting back, feeling some sort of way. Now the next thing you know, we got cakes and pies, and because you know I'm, everybody know I was cake queen, honey, cake queen. But we have to take into account that we are responsible. Uh. Yeah, Tiffany, you missed it. You're gonna have to watch the um the other, you're gonna have to watch part one. If it if it's saved to YouTube, I mean Facebook, I mean uh Instagram, you have to watch that. But the one that's here on Facebook, I'll download it and you can guys go follow me on um 
on YouTube under April Mason TV, and you'll be able to rewatch it. Um, re be able to rewatch it there. Okay. So that's what I had to share with you tonight. I had to heal my emotions in order to lose the weight because I was working out. I was eating pretty decent, but my midsection kept growing. Okay. But I had to choose to heal my emotions. And let me say, it's not an easy thing to do. And this is why I say that. Because the questions that I ask you in your free PDF, make sure you go to Fit Fine Feminine or AprilMason.com and click on gift to get your free PDF from me. The questions that I ask you inside of that PDF will bring up things. Here's the deal. When it start coming up, write down how you feel. Write it down. Write it down. And sit in it. Okay? Sit in it. And I'm, I'm writing a book, um, and it's all about choices, because I'm getting more into the manifest, manifesting now that I understand, you know, law of attraction, manifesting love and money. Like, I really know how to do that. Like, it was, it was just, it just kind of blew me away. Matter of fact, let me, let me tell you, I was my daughter, we were laughing. Somebody I dated, and I thought about him early Mother's Day. He ran across my mind. We hadn't heard from each other in a while. The holidays have passed, um, you know, all that. And we hadn't heard, I hadn't heard from him. He hadn't heard from me. But I, he ran across my mind. And that was like 2 o'clock in the morning. I said, I wonder how such and such. Huh, okay. Went to bed. Woke up at 9.02 in the morning. He had sent me a happy Mother's Day text at 8.30. Now, he could have sent it for Christmas, Thanksgiving, all these other holidays that went by. But he didn't run through my mind during those times. When he ran through my mind, I got a text. Hmm, interesting. I ain't even gonna get into. I'm not even gonna get into the, uh, the manifesting part. I think I taught y'all. I taught a course on manifesting. Okay. But everything that I'm saying tonight. It all starts with emotion. Okay? It all starts with your emotion. Let me see if I can see any of these questions, if we had any questions before I get off, because we didn't talk just about two hours, y'all. We didn't talk about just about two hours. Hold on. Look, look, look. you know, no, I got to put my glasses on. Um... Uh, you guys are so welcome. Uh, Loretta said, gosh, this is backed by so much scientific information. It's ridiculous. I, girl, I had to learn that. I had to learn that. Um, Tanika says, people tell me I'm not fat. I know I am, and I'm losing weight because I don't like how I look. Look, I, uh, kudos to you. And we got to stop trying. We got to stop acting like, first of all, people got to stop being so sensitive. And then we also have to stop acting like a thing isn't a thing. I knew when I was a lardo. I knew that when I walked past that mirror, I was like, oh, my goodness, April, what's going on with you? You've never been this big in your life. And everybody was like, yeah, but we like thick girl. This is not about you liking no thick girl. I don't like being no thick girl. Like, not like that. No. So we have to be honest with ourselves. And what's going on is we're not in, we're so not in tune that we don't even realize we're buying bigger dresses. And I started looking in my closet. I, I remember looking, I was like, wow, I got a size 10 dress. I've always wore a size six or eight dress. If I say, go to go get me a Calvin Klein dress in a size six or eight, I know they're going to fit, period. But when I start seeing a, a 10 and a 12 and a 14, we're not paying attention because we're in our heads. Okay, we're in our heads. 
and we're not paying attention. We're just going to the store. Now you go from a sm wearing some small panties. Now you're wearing a large panties. I'm like, wait a minute. I can't even wear my little sexy panties no more because, you know, now the, uh, what you call it, little panties go up under your stomach and your stomach hanging all over. But if you don't want your stomach hanging all over, you can't wear no bikinis. You got to wear the other, the other panties. I don't want to wear them. <laughs> I don't want to wear them. Let's see. Did you take that as a sign? What do what did okay? What do you do when that happens? When you think of someone and then you hear from them? Um, it's called it's called when you understand manifesting, when you understand um why most people don't manifest what they want in their lives because they don't know how to detach. And I think I taught that before. I don't see it as a sign of anything. I just thought he came to mind and he text he texted me. That was I, I didn't look at it as as anything. He just randomly, you know, crossed my mind. Okay, Brittany says, how do you stay disciplined? The moment I start doing good for too long, I self-sabotage and I don't understand why. Here's the thing, Brittany, you have to be so focused that can't nothing take you off of that. The only reason why you self-sabotage is because you start thinking opposing thoughts. You got to be so important. If you took my any of you took my um, manifest course, manifest one or two, you'll see that one of the things that I talked about is thoughts create things. So if you're if you sabotage, it's only because you're choosing to think thoughts that will sabotage you. So you have to be so in tune. This this process requires focus like literally y'all see i've left social media pretty much for about eight months i'm not suggesting that you have to do that because you know as someone that's a, in a leadership position i always got to go through it do you know the hard well, not to say the hard way but by every every um step i gotta take i gotta walk out and then i'm able to give it to you in a condensed version you may not have to do exactly what i did um, but it does require intense focus. Yes, it does. The same way you'll focus on somebody else's job, the same way you focus on them kids and, and put everybody else first, it requires that. Okay. It requires that. It requires that. Hi, I have never met. I have never been married. I still want to find a husband or life partner. Can you get me connected? No, I can't get you connected, but you can get you connected. You can get you connected. Stop looking outside of yourself for answers. The answers are inside of you. If you want to be married or if you want to be in a committed relationship, that should be your number one priority. You should position yourself to attract somebody. Start with figuring out your emotions, though. Figure them out. Get on the road to figuring that out. Yes, uh, Leslie, them jackets is comfortable, but them jeans will tell you the truth. <laughs> them, them, them leggings and jackets will make you feel like you ain't gained no weight, but then go get, go get some jeans with no stretch in them. That's the truth. Mm. Do you see a plant based? Do you use a plant based cookbook? I'm a vegetarian and trying to go plant based. I do. Um, I bought a cookbook from what's her name? Surviving Vegan on YouTube. I'm on Instagram and loving it live. That's the restaurant that I go to here in Atlanta. Um, they have a cookbook. And I bought that maybe two years ago. And that's how I learned how to make um, pine nut cheese. I learned how to make nut meat. I learned how to make, was it cheesecake? I think so. I think so. Yeah. Um, how do you stay committed to yourself? I've always had someone partner or be accountable. So I'm struggling to be accountable, committed. Had a trainer for two years with uh, was fine and soon as I, I ended it I would it was fine okay as soon as I ended it I would write back you gotta love yourself more 
that's what it really is. You have to love yourself so much that you say nothing is going to take me off my game. The same tenacity and drive and commitment that you have to going to work every day. See, the thing is, you, you will get up and go because there's somebody that got a check waiting for you. Act like there's a check waiting for you. Matter of fact, act like life is waiting for you on the other side and death is waiting for you on the other side if you don't. Act like that. Uh, let's see. Yeah, the answer is always within you. Um, vision boards are good, but I'm not really an advocate for vision boards unless you're going to feel it. Here's the thing. Here's why affirmations don't work for most people. You can say a thing all day. You can see a thing all day, but if you do not believe it at your core, it does not matter. Let me say that again. If you do not believe what you're saying and what you're seeing, and if you don't believe it's available to you at your core, if you have not gone down and changed your motherboard, changed your belief systems, you can have a vision board with a nice little house and your husband and everything else. You will not manifest it because you really don't believe that. I'm all about shifting beliefs, not necessarily just shifting words or necessarily going through the motion. It's a belief system that has to be changed. How do you start to look for a partner during this quarantine? You need to join the Teach Me How to Date VIP Academy because those ladies are over there virtually dating and have a, having a great time doing quarantine. I've already talked about that, uh, but you got to join the Teach Me How to Date VIP Academy. If you do that, but God, by going to aprilmason.com and clicking on Teach Me How to Date or go to teachmehowtodate.com. Um, glad you're not talking keto. No, I, I, I'm, I like to go as natural as possible. Whatever works for you works. But for me, keto requires too much meat and I don't do meat. At least I don't do that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, I made the decision today. This is confirmation. Awesome. Awesome. April, you have given out some powerful yet awesome information. Thank you for keeping it real and deep. Don't let others block your growth or progress. Nobody can block me but me. Okay? I don't even, I don't worry about people. I don't worry about people. When I, when I tell you my unbotheredness behind people, how, what they got to say is so not there, like, I don't even worry about that. Don't understand it was designed for you to be here tonight to hear this word. Your destiny requires you to be and hear this news. Yes, news. It's about you. It's about you to it's time, time for you to shift. Awesome, awesome. Um, so yes, self-love. I received that. Absolutely. I'm glad you guys are receiving that. It's real work. That sitting home alone and letting your mind wander on the pain and hurt will try to take you out. Absolutely. So how do you start healing from the inside? Make sure you rewatch this video because I gave that information. But but the first, honestly, the first thing you got to do is admit it. Okay. Uh, let's see. Thank you for this food for my soul. I'm getting ready for bed and work in the morning. Stay safe. Good night. Yes, nobody can block me. Nobody can block me, but but me because if I give you the power. To be, if I call, if you, if I allow you to be the reason for my happiness, that means I have to give you the power to be the reason for my sadness. And nobody has that. Everything is within you. So whatever you're choosing to think about is what you're going to bring about. If you don't want to be sad and feel sad, choose to change your thoughts. Okay. I'm out of here. Good night. Make sure you go to Fit, Fine, and Feminine to download your free PDF. Go to aprilmason.com, click on gifts. If you can't get to the website and I will see you ladies and gentlemen at another time. I hope this blessed you. I hope your eyes were opened. I hope that you stop hiding behind the makeup, hiding behind the hair, hiding fellas, hiding behind, uh, you know, I'm, I'm grinding, going to get the money, the nice cars, the nice um, the things, everything that you can buy and really deal with yourself. Because if you're not attracting the type of people that you'd like to attract into your life, it would only suggest 
that you're not doing the real, real inner work. Okay, heal those emotions, and then you can slim that waist, honey. Slim them thighs, honey. And you're just gonna be overall happy. You know, a lot of things that you thought that mattered, it's not really gonna matter like that anymore. You're just gonna be like, you know what? I healed myself for me. And you'll just start seeing the weight shed because you're no longer bogged down emotionally and mentally with things that do not matter. And your happiness is so important. The happier you are, you know, let me say this to you also. If you feel like you're in a mood, always tune in to what you're thinking about. When you get up and say, oh, I woke up on the wrong side of the bed, check in with yourself and see what's replaying. It's like music. If you want to if you want to change the atmosphere and get all romantic, what do you do? You put on some romantic music and it shifts you. It shifts your vibe. We'll use that same analogy when you're feeling down. Tune in and be like, wait a minute. I ain't feeling my best. And then shift as you would if you were laying there or your boo was setting the mood. And he put on some Isley Brothers. You know, I once had your loving baby and I can't let go. You know, he starts singing all that stuff to you, even though you had a bad day. What happens? Shifts. You are in control. So if you don't do anything else, just ask when you go to bed tonight. God, creator, universe, whatever you call him, or him or her, whatever, whatever you believe in. Show me me. I'm ready to open and I'm ready to heal. Show me. Just don't push away what may come because it's not familiar to you. You can't say you want a thing, but if it doesn't come the way you want it, you reject it. Or it comes in a package that you were taught was not necessarily right, but they never told you why it wasn't. That might be the very thing that helped you connect and understand you. All right. Love y'all. Good night.